order before we okay so now we'll call the meeting to order and before we start i'd like to mention this to me takes place in the traditional and ancestral territory of the mi'kmaq people and we are all treaty people uh there's no additions or deletions to the agenda so we're on to number four approval of the agenda there's a recommendation uh there's a change there that committee of the whole approved the agenda for september 3rd 24 not august 27th obviously as presented so is someone willing to move that move by councillor mosier second by councillor halverson all those in favor raise your right hand all those opposed next is the, the approval of the minutes we actually do at the official next council meeting which is september the 10th uh so then there's no presentations there's no business arising uh from the minutes or unfinished business so we'll move on to new business which is 8.1 quinn wallace renaming discussion requested by councillor halverson so councillor halverson i'll uh i'll give you the floor to start great thank you and thanks to everyone for taking time out of their uh the, the last vestiges of summer to join us here tonight so uh, i wanted to bring this forward because i you know we've had some time like i said last time to uh to uh, kind of digest what happened. This obviously was very controversial for everyone in town. And I thought it was, it bared uh, revisiting considering it seems to have stalled. And this is something, you know, we're, we're nearing the end of our term and we should be cleaning up our house. So this is one of those, one of those items. Um, where to begin? Uh, I think before we, before we start, if, I, if memory serves me, the idea behind the renaming, uh, we had a we had a letter brought forth. Someone said, you know, Cornwallis was problematic. And, you know, when the spirit of reconciliation, it should be changed. I, I just want to be sure, is that everyone else's recollection? Like, do it, does everyone agree here that that like or is anyone here who doesn't think this was this renaming, the intent of this was uh, to be in the spirit of reconciliation? No one? Okay. Well, I'll start, I guess. That I, I asked the question, though. Is it, yeah, no, no. Yeah, okay. To me, I wasn't here at the beginning of the yeah, whole process. Exactly. So I was here right at the very end, I think. Uh, sure. So I don't know. I think that's what I read and what I've read in the report. Okay. That's certainly what it was intended for. But, but uh, you okay. know, I wasn't involved in how the committee was formed back no, no. in whatever yeah, and everything else. So, yeah, no. No. So, anyway, I just want to make sure we're all start at the same starting point. Like, I don't want to make you know, go off on a tangent here, making assumptions if, if they're wrong. So I, I appreciate everyone. Um, so my concern is that we we went down this path um, of reconciliation and we started with the best of intent. You know, we, we heard a concern. We said, okay, that seems reasonable. Let's address that. And then we bogged it down <laughs> and we, you know, put it through, through the bureaucratic churn um, and it somehow came out the other end and became really divisive. And that was never the intent. Um, our intent here was to move forward, and as we acknowledge in the spirit of reconciliation, to try and do, try and represent all interests in the town, not just one particular perspective. Um, you know, I think... We, we started, I believe we sent this to the anti-racism committee. And to my knowledge, I think where we fell down with this is that we, we didn't get enough, we didn't touch enough places where we had uh, input from First Nations, because this is really what it centers around. Uh, the only two places, that, to my recollection, and I, I stand to be corrected here, where uh, we had any input, uh, one was at the anti-racism committee, where we had representation on the committee. And the second was the, uh, we, we received an unsolicited letter from uh, Daniel Paul, uh, who um, recommended the name Reconciliation Lane, uh, quite eloquently laid it all out. It was a, a wonderful letter, and we can go back and look at that if we need to. But my concern is that we had a, a suggestion of Reconciliation Lane from, from Daniel Paul, who is the person who actually identified how problematic Cornwallis was and his uh, is the reason that we're even having these discussions. And we had a recommendation from the anti-racism committee for San Juan. And it just seems that the two points of contact we've had with uh, uh, with any indigenous consultation 
were ignored in favor of, of something that when we're talking about reconciliation uh, and we're talking about Cornwallis and the history involved there is as someone who, while representing the crown, committed heinous acts against Indigenous peoples. Um, and then to turn around and name the street after that crown that he represents, as I said, it was a slap in the face. I, I think we um, we could do better. Uh, I guess what I, I would look to see is, has anyone thought any further about why Queen was chosen and uh, about their position? Um, I, I'd really be interested in hearing uh, if if the positions haven't changed, uh, why, wh what you support and why. So I'll just leave that out there. Thank you. And before we go any further, I'll just, I guess, clarify from what I what I know, but what we can do uh, if we want to rediscuss this, you know, in an official manner after this or reconsider our decision originally. What we'll have to do after the discussion tonight, because this is what this is about, about discussion, open discussion. We'd have to have a motion made to put it back on the council a next, you know, a, an upcoming council agenda to discuss at that time. So I just wanted to get clarity out there of what the next process is from a legality or MGA standpoint. But again, this is for discussion. So now I'll open the floor to any other councillors that might like to uh, chime in. Councillor Moser. Well, all I can say is uh, this has been uh, addressed, been in front of council, it has been addressed by council. And uh, my only questions are, why are we revisiting it? And, uh, and why hasn't it been acted upon you know, the decision of council been acted upon. So I don't even know why we're having the discussion tonight. Thank you. Anybody else? Deputy Mayor. To answer your question as to why we chose Queen, it's because this was put out to the community and the community as a whole voted and that was what came out. Uh, there have been many times that this council has claimed that they wish to listen more to the community and we want to be transparent. We want to be out there and this was the singular time that we did ask the community and they came up with the uh with that and personally i feel whether we agree with the name or not i still stick to what i said back when this was first brought up that i welcome having uh all the stories told but i don't believe that the street is a place that that story should be told we are in the process we, we named two parks uh, during this term for you know Black representation, colored representation, I apologize, and uh, Indigenous representation. And uh, having those, having an opportunity to create a narrative is is much better in a park than it ever will be on a street. And, uh, and frankly, I think we'd be setting an extremely dangerous precedent if we've seen a lot of what can happen when the loudest voices in the room tend to speak during this term. And if we keep going back, we are creating an extremely dangerous precedent that who knows where it will take us. Thank you. And I guess, uh, you know, looking back at my decision, because like I said, and it's not an excuse or a way to try to escape from the decision originally, I made the decision based on the information that I was presented and told at the time, looking into it further. Do I think there could have it could have been done better uh, a year and a half ago when it was just started? Most definitely. Do I think that some things could have been left out of the original survey or some names? Most definitely. Uh, but again, on Deputy Mayor's points, they you, the committee that was formed at the time that, again, was before my term, approved this name from the way I read all the minutes I go back to, and it was put on the survey, and it was chosen by 36% of the people, and then as we did the elimination process that we were asked to do, the numbers even went up. So again, to, to Deputy Mayor's point, I felt very strongly when the decision was made in November that, you know, I ran on Connecting Community and Council, the first decision that I had to be the tiebreaker on was this decision. And that's what the community chose. So I felt that that's, you know, that's why I made the decision I made. And I, I said that then and I'll say it again. Do I think it, it might be better to be revisited? Uh, 
I think that maybe we could do things better. I think there's better ways to do it. Uh, but again, there's been a decision of council made. Uh, whether I like the decision when it's all said and done and after I review the way things have been done or not, the process is the process. So unless we get enough support to put it back on the table, we can sit here all night and argue the decision, but it's not going to change the decision. So I'm, you know, I'm not sure what our next steps are really uh, besides a motion to get it back on council or move on and we rename it Queen Street. Uh, that's really where we're at. I mean, it was, there's been attempts made by people at this table and by staff at times uh, earlier in the year, reaching out to some individuals with not much response at all. So I'm not sure what more steps we can take at this point, unless we start the process all over again. And I'm not saying that's not what we should or shouldn't do, but again, that's up to this council. And there's a decision of council already on the floor that has to be sent back to council to be overturned. So I don't know where we're going to go with this, I guess is where I'm saying, I, I got, what is you, what do you want to see come out of this council or however, since what I ask. So as we're all aware, we can overturn decisions of council like that for a council. We've already done it this year, this term. Um, so, I mean, that's, you know, we, we can, we can affect the change whenever we'd like to, you know, it, it just takes the will to do it. Right. Uh, I did ask earlier uh, today, uh, I, I sent a note uh, asking Kayla if she could, because I couldn't find, um, well, first I want to correct you on one thing, the committee that was formed, the anti-racism committee, their recommendation was not Queen. It was Sam Juan. That was the recommendation that came out of, came out of that one. Yeah. Uh, the Queen was not the recommendation, so just be clear on that one. Um, but I did ask Kayla today to try and track down how that process unfolded, how did Queen get in there? Because my understanding is it somehow showed up in the committee, but then it it was never one of the original names put forward. Um, my could you did a little research? Could you do you mind sharing what you told, told us or found, told me today, Kayla? Yeah. So if it's the will of council through the chair, I can give a little bit of background of how those names got put forward on the public survey that went out. So as you had discussed um, earlier this evening, it was the town's anti-racism special committee that had originally discussed renaming Cornwallis based on a letter that the council had received earlier. So at a December meeting in 2022, the committee came together and they put forward all these ideas for different names, um, most of them being Mi'kmaq names. Uh, and then the committee had a discussion where they ended up deciding on three names that they were going to finalize. Those three names as the committee came forward and said was Reconciliation, Queen, and Psalm 1. The committee then held a vote and eventually Psalm 1 was picked and that ended up being the um, recommendation that went forward to council later in December of 2022. Uh, however, when we did get to that survey in 2023, the localized town of Lunenburg special or local special committee had already been dissolved. So it's not very clear how those nine names, like it's not a cut and dry of how those na nine names were decided. But if we go back and look at the minutes from 2022 of the anti-racism committee, it were it was all of these names. So rather than dealing with the three that the committee had narrowed down, being Reconciliation, Queen, and Samoan, it looks like the survey just took all of those names. So nine of those names that were discussed, seven being Mi'kmaq names and two being English names. All right, thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, so yeah, so still some mystery as to why those ones were all included. Uh, we don't actually know, okay. Um, so just to respond um, to counts, uh, sorry, to the deputy mayor. Um, yeah, the committee did vote as a whole i do agree i mean and we want the committee we want community input obviously but we also want to provide the community with community with um options that represent our community in the best light when we pick a name that is blatantly uh flies in the face of of reconciliation what we're trying to do that's a failing on us, um, you know, as, as an operation. And, you know, 
I don't think it was a, I don't think it was a fair place to, to put our townspeople in, frankly. I think we could have done better. Um, the streets not being a place to tell a story. Uh, streets, street names hold place. They hold meaning for people. That's why everyone is so uh, uh, invested in this right now. If it if they didn't, we wouldn't be sitting here, right? So to my mind, we've got an entire town's worth of streets that represent a colonial heritage. Um, we have been asked, and I will actually say, as I said to other people too, I actually don't even have a problem with the name Queen Street. I have a problem with Queen uh, replacing Cornwallis in the spirit of reconciliation because it doesn't jive, right? You could pick any other street and name a queen. Oh, fantastic. But when we're trying to do something in the spirit of reconciliation, um, it doesn't, it just doesn't work. Uh, I see you want to say something. I've got more to say, but please go step on in. Deputy Mayor. I just wanted to know what your thoughts on Crescent and Bridgewater were. Well, or for that matter, any of the other towns in Nova Scotia that have renamed their Cornwall streets without using Mi'kmaq names or Indigenous well, names. Well, I thought Nora Bernard was really, really well done. That's that's the gold standard of how to rename a street. Um, we don't have the resources that Halifax does, unfortunately, but that is the gold standard. Um, Crescent Street, I think, was um, I think it was it was convenient because it it was a natural extension of a street, and it was the obvious way to to replace that. So I thought they were fortunate in that they had an easy, an easy way of, of managing that change. Uh, Halifax, like I said, no, replacing Cornwalls with Nora Bernard. Um, I don't know if you read the emails I sent you that provided all the links with how they went through that process, but it was extensive. They received uh, literally thousands of submissions for names. And though the difference was though, they had a panel of experts who were schooled in, in uh, Indigenous affairs and in reconciliation. And they assessed each one of those as they came in for, to, to see if it was appropriate in the spirit of reconciliation. We, we don't have the resources to do that, right? Um, I thought it was a fantastic process. First, they did that. Uh, you know, then they brought it to a, a, a com community group. Uh, all those, all of the names that came forward had to be, uh, they had to justify who they were, tell a story about if it was a person, why they're appropriate. And it, it was a long, long, long process that involved a whole great deal of community uh, involvement. But again, at the very start, had that screening process by experts that we, we didn't benefit from. And that's the part where I'm saying, I think we fell down on, um, as, a, as an organization by not uh, taking that time to taking the care to making sure that our citizens were presented uh, with the best choices, right? Um, I also know that you, I know you, you you favor the the Queen Street because of the historical significance, right? I know it aligns the the street grid. Um, uh, I know that was a only one of them. Yeah, only one of them. I know, it's, but it still was a reason. Um, I did look up. See, the part of the, the issue I have with uh, using a historical framework, and I get we're a historical town, I, I get that, and you know we have a colonial legacy, but part of the process in this, and in every, at every step, we kept referencing part of the CCP that said we're trying to, like, we have a lot, we have, an, we have more than enough, we, we are blessed with a great deal of colonial history here. Uh, we don't need to continue to perpetuate colonial history. We need to start celebrating some of the other people and other uh, uh, groups who are responsible for making this a great town. Um, and here, here, hence Labrador Park and Sylvia Park. Certainly, certainly. But the problem we have with place naming in, in general, and actually right across the country, is that it, it's based on something called the doctrine of discovery. Uh, I, I assume you're probably familiar with what that is. is okay. Um, for the benefits of others i i found a, a little bit here that i can share this is from uh uh this is from the sorry canadian museum of human rights 
in Winnipeg, uh, and talking about the doctrine of discovery and human rights. So if uh, I'll just quote here for a quick second here. In the Canadian context, the doctrine of discovery has led to the seizure of Indigenous lands and the displacement of Indigenous peoples. As colonial settlements spread over the territory that became Canada, many Indigenous peoples entered treaty relationships defining how they would share the land with the newcomers. Influenced by the absolute claims to power and authority expressed by the doctrine, Canadian law interpreted these agreements as surrendering title and control, despite these concepts being largely alien to Indigenous cultures. I'll skip down a little bit here. Um, the racist assumption of superiority and dominance embodied in the doctrine of discovery underpins many aspects of Canada's colonial history, including the Indian Act, the reserve system, the Indian residential school tragedy, and the 60s scoop. And the reason I bring that up is that, you know, part of reconciliation, and we, as a society, we're never going to atone for the atrocities that were committed to the Indigenous peoples in referenced here, all right? Um, but part of reconciliation is, is acknowledging that, you know, as great a country as we have here, and we have a lot to celebrate, we have a lot too that we need to atone for. And basing basing place naming on the doctrine of discovery and the fact that, you know, uh, Europeans showed up here with the blessing of the church uh, to say that there was nobody here and we can name it whatever we wanted, uh, disregarding completely the people who've lived here for thousands of years um, is a grave injustice. And again, this is something that happens at a nation to nation level. But what we can do We've been called on by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission to do what we can. And what we can is to hold places, hold place names for Indigenous peoples. This is a, it's the best we can do. And it's such a, a small gesture, but how meaningful. And if we want to build relationships and reconciliation, if we want to move forward together with First Nations peoples, this is how we do it we make the overtures you know we just can't uh, to the mayor's point uh, i know there were overtures made uh, when this was being processed uh, for, for input but i mean when, when you have something that's this controversial are you going to wade into it and then take the blame for it nobody really wants to do that right so i think you know in the spirit of reconciliation and trying to move forward I, I think what we really need to do is take another look at this and maybe look if, if we could take Queen out of the equation, pick any one of the other names uh, that were on that list and go forward, uh, you know, I think that would be the, the right thing to do in keeping what, what our, our initial uh, uh, plan was um, and, and, and move forward together with Indigenous peoples. Anyone else? Where? Okay, so I guess at this point, uh, you know, uh, there was a lot that was said there and a, and a lot to think about. We have really a couple options. We can make a motion to put it back to council. We can defer this for another time because, uh, you know, I'm, it's not my first rodeo. I can read the room. If you make a motion, it has to be seconded. So uh, I don't really think that's going to happen. So we can defer it for a future or you can defer it till down the road, but you're more than welcome to make a motion. I can't second a motion. So that's up to you, Councillor Halverson, how you want to proceed. No, I will make the motion. I will make the motion to uh, send this back to council uh, for further consideration, uh, renaming Cornwallis uh, off the, uh, the list of names, uh, the original list of, I was it nine names? Thank you. Uh, my motion would be to rename, uh, consider renaming Cornwallis off the list of original nine names, striking Queen as an option. We have that? Yeah. So it's been moved by Councillor Halverson. Is there a seconder to the motion? Is there a second to the motion? And third and final time, is there a seconder to the motion? There's no seconder to the motion, so the motion dies on the floor. So we'll send this back to staff, and they'll give us a written report on 
what the next steps are, which Councilor Moser basically stated it. Uh, I figure they're going to start the process of, uh, of, of the renaming to Queen, because that's what we decided back in November of 23. Uh, and I mean, depending on how long that takes to, to, to be successful, to get done, uh, there's a, you know, an election on October 19th, any council can change a decision made by a current council at that time. So I would say until that date, this is basically issue is, is, is done at this point. So that's how I see the way the things read. So, I'm, I'm, you know, that's okay. So we'll move on to 8.2, dangerous and a slightly property bylaw. So we do have a report in there. So, uh, you want to have Kayla give a quick uh, overview of the re of the report she uh, she's done for us? Hey, Kayla. Sure. So tonight we have a dangerous and unsightly request for direction. So back in July, staff had brought forward a um, vegetation property management bylaw that specifically looked at um, landscaping and vegetation and those standards through a bylaw. Um, after that was presented, council had requested that that come back as a more comprehensive, dangerous and unsightly bylaw. So tonight, we're just hoping if council would like to move forward with a more comprehensive bylaw, we would appreciate your input on what you would like to see included in there. So in my report, I uh, attached the MGA's definition of what dangerous and unsightly is. As you'll see, I've kind of flagged a few things that could be a little ambiguous or uh, subjective to different folks. So through our own localized bylaw, uh, the town has the powers to create or rather further define what unsightly and dangerous looks like. Again, the intent is not to contravene the act, but rather to put more parameters or more definition on what we would like to see. There's also another option that if council didn't think we needed our own comprehensive dangerous and unsightly and that the MGA was fine as the sole guiding legislation on this, uh, staff would still recommend that we put forward a dangerous and unsightly policy, which would capture how we deal with complaints. Uh, it would also be noted that this issue was brought forward back in September of last year because of um, a council direction to see a policy that encourages lawn naturalization. Um, so if we were to solely go with the Municipal Government Act, we've stated before that it might not necessarily be clear on what unsightly landscaping is. So just something for council to consider. And also if having a policy that encourages law and naturalization is no longer the appetite of council. Uh, it would also be appreciative uh, from staff's perspective just to get that clarity on direction. Or are we trying to build a dangerous and unsightly policy that allows for naturalization or is that no longer being included in the in the conversation? So with that, I leave it to council to discuss and I'm happy to fill in any questions. Thank you very much, Kayla. So anyone want to uh, start? around the table with this one. Councilor Moser. Thank you, Worship. Well, the one thing that I would challenge in this report is that council made a motion to encourage law naturalization. I don't think that was ever the intent of council to encourage naturalization. I think, I think it was that how we would deal with naturalization, not encourage it. And that's where I think where a lot of this has gone awry with staff. Staff has prepared the original budget, that uh, original uh, bylaw that really encouraged naturalization. And I think that's why it got thrown back, you know, when it came forward to council. So uh, I do, uh, I do think that you should um, have a bylaw. I think a lot of it would be, you know, appropriate around the MGA. Uh, but then, you know, you can put we can put in your own standards for our community that we might, might feel uh, would be suitable. And I think a uh, a lawn height, maximum height, would be one of the ways that you would deal with the current challenge that's in front of council and staff regarding naturalization. I have no I have issues with naturalization. But I think when someone lifts their property from the four corners of their property, just grow wild. That's not naturalization, not naturalization in my mind. 
so uh anyway um and i think uh the other thing that in that original bylaw the uh the compliance time was more than ambiguous when it came to you know being you know rectified so you know snap a 30 day recommendation on that which is more than reasonable for someone to to uh you know get them get, get their themselves in line with the bylaw and uh, and a and a stiff enough penalty uh, you mentioned like you know should have increasing penalties you know for multiple ex, uh, offenses i don't think that's necessary but i think a penalty that is significant enough that it pinches when you the first time you won't uh, have to do it again so i'm sort of thought in the neighborhood of a thousand bucks thank you anybody else Councillor Halverson. Um, I I agree. We need we need to amend this policy because the MGA is not sufficient. Uh, this came up because we had somebody who wanted to naturalize their lawn. Uh, I, I like the recommendation that you've put forward here. Uh, the naturalization in policy. Stop taking the glasses off here. Uh, where. You know, we allow for diverse, we could write it in that it allows for diverse ground cover beyond conventional mode lawns, gravel pavement along the plants used are not hazardous and are not invasive species or weeds that easily spread. Uh, it could also be a provision for requiring trimming of plants when they pose a hazard, such as tall grasses creating a fire risk during droughts. Um, that seems entirely reasonable. You know, you know, that I think that's that is the balance we need to strike, which is allowing people uh to express themselves and express their belief in in uh, an an, ec an ecologically sensitive environment, um, but it also uh, mitigates concerns around uh, hazards such as invasive plants and fire risks. Um, you know, anything more than that, like we we talk about ambiguity being good sometimes. Anything more than that, we risk. Uh, you know, basically dictating to everybody, this is what your property has to look like. And no, you can't have that. You can't have those roses. You can only have the white roses. You can't have the red roses. You can only have the, these, you can only do perennials. You can't do annuals. It it starts to get into that kind of, if we're, if we're going to start getting in the weeds, boy, we're going to get in the weeds. So I, I like the idea of setting up a policy that says, yes, uh, we, you know, you can have law naturalization. I think uh, but it has to be safe and it has to protect your neighbors and we can't have invasive species coming coming across the lawn. So I thought that that was that was written well and that's a policy we could get behind. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, I'll just uh, I'll chime in. I, I actually agree with uh, Councillor Mosier. I think we should have a uh, have a, a maximum height. I uh, I think the fee. I think the um, your uh, your price might have been a little steep, but <laughs> but certainly somewhere in that uh, in that range. But uh, no one's trying to say that no, we can't grow certain types of plants or anything like that. There, but at the same time, there's a, a very severe difference between lawn naturalization and just simply lawn neglect. So. Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, I think some basic parameters are uh, are fine, and I uh, I thank staff for putting together such a such a concise document. And I know other municipalities neighboring us have similar things, and I think as long as we keep within a reasonable uh, proximity of what they're uh, doing, I think that's fine. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, I guess all of my two cents worth. I, I agree. I think that. Uh, reinventing the wheel here is not what we need to do at this time i think that the town of bridgewater and other towns neighboring us have bylaws that are i don't know if they're called naturalization bylaws but they're lawn bylaws 
I think Bridgewater's is 20 centimeters, if I remember reading it. I think staff had recommended originally 25 centimeters in our in our original proposal. And, and I'm okay if you go to even like 30 centimeters is, is a foot, 12 inches is 30 centimeters. So some of us still refer in inches rather than centimeters because of our age or whatever. So I'm okay with a height restriction. I certainly don't want us to have any control over what type of roses or plants or trees you plant in your yard. Uh, I think there's some examples around town, some people that have done a very beautiful job in their naturalization projects, and then I commend them. It takes a lot of work, actually, if you want to naturalize your yard to what really naturalization is. But I think we have to have some controls in place for a number of reasons. Uh, but one, I, I don't think you can just let your grass grow wild to as high as you want and think that's okay, because it's really, in my opinion, not naturalization when you do that. And there's some other things in here I read, like we need to define unsightly in certain areas. Well, we do have to put certain things in there as a council because uh, there are some areas of town right now that they're experiencing some, you know, difficulties with their neighbors putting whatever they want out front in their yard, like coaches, tires. That obviously isn't naturalization or appropriate in a town. So that has to be in there to give our staff when they go to deal with it some some thing, you know, some some real leverage when they go to tell them that can't be there. Uh, and uh, I don't agree in a tiered system. I think we just make a fine, whatever that may be, make it stiff enough that it's serious. So I was thinking two hundred and fifty dollars, not a not a thousand, but I thought two fifty was quite stiff, right? And I was thinking like. I actually thought on the other side of the coin, though, like we're not talking about tearing a building down here. We're basically talking about cutting some grass. So I was thinking th two to three weeks compliance. Like if you get noticed, you get 21 days to mow your yard, basically. And if you don't do it, then staff takes care of it or, or a month, right? But no longer than that. And besides that, like I said, there are some areas in town I've done a bit of driving around in the last week, especially for this to see. And there are more and more people naturalizing their yards. And there are, are most people are doing a, a really nice professional job. And you can tell they're really taking their time on it. There's some spots up my way that are beautiful. But then there's some spots up my way that I wouldn't. Beautiful wouldn't be the word I'd use, right? So I'm just saying, I do think there has to be some stipulations in there somehow. And if other towns have it and other towns enforce it, like I've been told by our staff they do, then again, we're not recreating the wheel. It shouldn't be that difficult, right? So that's how I see this going. But, you know, that's a choice we'll have to make as a council, but we can make a motion tonight to proceed or whatever, same as the last one. So that's my two cents. Anyone else have anything? Feel free. Councilor Halverson. My concern when I'm hearing these these discussions, and I, I agree. I mean, we don't want we don't want dangerous uh, premises. We don't want places that you know are just unkempt for the sake of being unkempt. I, I agree. It, nobody wants that. Um, but we're we're tossing around a lot of a lot of numbers here arbitrarily. Um, we're going to, it's going to be a $250 fine or a $1,000 fine or a $50 fine. Or, but, you know, if, you, if, you, if it adds up, well, it could be 5000 I mean, we're, 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 you know, and then can someone explain to me what's the difference? What are the benefits between uh, the benefits and, and the detractors between a, a 20 centimeter high lawn and a 25 centimeter high lawn? Right? We're, we're in aesthetics here. Right? So uh, this is what we're trying to get to. I mean, I, I think we need a bylaw that does, you know, what you talked about in here, something that encourages, uh, you, know, safe, you know, safe plants and, and make sure that if, you know, if there's an area, that, you know, if we're seeing it in a dry patch and there's long grass up against the house, that's obviously a, a fire concern. And we could issue a, a, a bylaw officer to have it go out and, and say, get that taken care of. And those are all very reasonable. And I think that's that's where we need to be looking is, instead of hitting these absolutes, I do believe we need to have uh, a little more flexibility, a less rigidity than than what we're talking about here. Councillor Moser. Well, what we're doing here, I thought, was that uh, staff is asking for some information to come back. So we're giving them information. So whether it's 250 or 1,000, staff will come back with a recommendation based on the information we're giving them tonight. So uh, it's not up for us to debate the... Uh, 
the length of the grass tonight or the amount of the fine. It's enough for us to give them some information that they can go back and decipher and do some research and bring a decent bylaw back here that we can pass. Uh, as, as far as my information that I know, that natural turf grass doesn't grow much, grow much more than 30 centimeters high. So if you have natural turf grass on your, gra on your property, it's not going to grow much, much beyond 30 centimeters. So you're not going to be forcing too many people to mow lawn if they have natural turf grass in their, you know, on their property. So I think some of the, the things that we touched on tonight make sense. And, uh, and I would move that, uh, you know, based on that information, staff would uh, come back with us with a bylaw that, uh, you know, and, and some research in some other communities and come back with the research that we can, uh, or a bylaw that we can uh, pass. So you're making that a motion? I'm making that a motion. It's been moved. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Kayla. So just a little clarity, if I may, um, just a little background from what I'm hearing too. The intent of the bylaw gives council the provisions to set its own fines. So that the way we do it now, just using the MGA as our guiding document on handling unsightly um, and dangerous complaints is that we issue uh, an official notice. They have 30 days to comply with the official notice. So it might say, you know, mow your grass. We have deemed this to be unsightly. Uh, our dangerous and unsightly administrator comes back. Uh, if it's not done within those 30 days, then we issue a remedial order, giving them another 30 days. And by the end of that 30 days, if it's not been um, dealt with, then that gives us the provision to go in and take care of whatever it might be, uh, recognizing if it truly were a dangerous situation, we could go in right away and remedy it. And then, so if it was an unsightly complaint with landscaping, it does give the town provisions to go in and remedy that. And then we would charge them. And if it doesn't get paid, it becomes a lien on your property. Um, so if you were going to go the policy route, this is what we have available to us. By laws, we are then able to set our own fine. So if it was 1000 to 250 that would be kind of a request for direction on what you want to see. And uh, from what I've heard tonight, the tiered system uh, doesn't seem to be uh, the general consensus here. So we would look at maybe different tiers for different penalties. If it's dangerous, is that something else? If it's unsightly landscaping, is that something else? So just something to consider and letting you know um, what powers a bylaw gives you versus what powers just having a policy or just using the MGA uh, provides you with. So again, just looking for that clarity. So um, if you did truly want to go through with a bylaw where we define our own things such as you know truly saying that in the town of Lunenburg all properties must abide by a 25 centimeter um, height restriction and uh, the MGA is quite clear on some things like couches and derelict vehicles and stuff like that but if there's anything else that we deemed to be unsightly as a community then that's where you would flush it out anything um, you know I think in here we even say like child lurement anything that can and i think the intent there in the mga is that like don't have an open freezer um but the intent there is like let's hash that out and define what are these things that we do want to see brought back in this bylaw um so i appreciate the notion of let's get a bylaw but what what other things do you want to see there is it just grass do we want to further flesh out anything that could be perceived as an ambiguous uh, term ambiguous sorry <laughs> Well, we have the grass in front of us, right? That's that's what spurred this whole thing on. So, you know, we may as well deal with the grass. Uh, as I said like before, when we discussed the bylaw, the part I do like about the MGA is that it is vague enough that it is can be a community-based complaint and it can be a community-based uh, penalty to that complaint, right? So, you know, if the neighbors or if the neighborhood or the community in general doesn't like the way you know, something's being operated, then they can complain and they have their day in court and they can be decided by council whether it's deemed reasonable or unreasonable, right? So, you know, we don't have to, even the more you, 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 the more you try to be precise, almost the more you're going to keep, just keep asking questions, it keeps bouncing back and forth. So the MGA is great in that regard that it keeps it really vague. Uh, this community happens to have the grass issue in front of it, so we may as well deal with the grass issue within that bylaw then. That's how I would look at it. Okay, so there's a motion on the floor. Is there a second or a motion first before we proceed? Apologies, can we clarify the motion again? 
The motion to bring forward a dangerous and unsightly bylaw for council's consideration. Yes, but before we go on beyond that, you have a point on policy. So what is, what would you see more effective? Policy, bylaw, efficiency and, and practicality within that, you know, those two. Yeah, through the chair. Um, so I think what the mayor had mentioned before about reinventing the wheel. Uh, so when we look at what a policy could do for us, it would allow us to operate kind of how we've been operating by also putting a few more definitions in it. So if you look at the report truly, when we're dealing with unsightly landscaping complaints, we've only received three this year. Um, so I think, you know, it would still be suitable. Like if, if for all these years, we've just been using the MGA as our sole guiding legislation on how we deal with unsightly uh, and dangerous, recognizing that a lot of the MGA is very clear. Don't, don't have garbage, like unorganic waste, you know, don't have anything that is truly dangerous, like a dilapidated shed. Um, so when we look at creating a whole flushed out bylaw for maybe three complaints because some landscaping things is a bit ambiguous, within a policy, we could still flush out that definition to say, hey, we use the MGA as our dangerous and unsightly guiding legislation, um, and this is how we deal with complaints. So we would say, again, we issue, if if council wanted to see something like we, we issue an official notice, then we do the remedial order, then we can go in and fix things on our own and charge you. And then within there, we could add definitions. So it's not on us to kind of make this community law. We're still using the ambiguous terms of the MGA, but flushing out a few more things. So within that policy, we could still define what does unsightly landscaping look like for us. And if the appetite of council was to still touch on some naturalization, we could further define that. So again, um, the policy, this is how I explain bylaws and policies too. A bylaw is the law of the community. A policy is something you choose to engage with. Um, so when you choose to make an, a complaint, this is what we adhere to. A bylaw would put parameters for absolutely everybody within the town. So just something to consider. Thank you, Council Roger. Yeah, and just, just to that point, I mean, so, you know, efficiencies in, in bringing this back to Council and, and managing it, which would you recommend? Uh, at this point, I would probably recommend the policy route because there are a lot of things that we don't really want to define or we're not having issues with. I, I think if we were having, you know, 100 complaints on unsightly properties or 100 complaints on dangerous properties and the, am the ambiguous terms in the Municipal Government Act were truly you know, something staff were dealing with all the time, then fleshing out a more detailed in-depth bylaw would be a more appropriate route. At this point, I think we can say, we still give a nod to the MGA and this is what we choose to use. However, for certain ambiguous terms like unsightly landscaping, this is how we choose to define it for Lunenburg. And then we formalize our complaint process, which I've gone over with you where we do the official notice. Um, that's our practice. We don't have that written anywhere. It should be formalized in a policy of some sort. So again, we're not out necessarily monitoring, controlling the law of a bylaw. However, if someone chooses to make a complaint, we vet it across like the Municipal Government Act, and then we launch into our own complaint process. Yep. So I would go the policy route then. And as I, my experience here over the years, um, most people are breaking bylaws every day. They don't under, They don't even realize they're doing it. Uh, I always had my little uh, uh, opportunity when people talk about uh, short-term rentals in, in on private, you know, in like in homes and property. So there is a a bylaw that this town has that you can't put your garbage out, you know, so many hours before garbage pickup. And most of those places have a garbage can out on their front lawn like by, by the driveway that they can you know the guests put their garbage in when they leave so that in fact is breaking a bylaw so if you want to cut down on your short-term rentals that would be a headache for the people that would own some of these that don't live around here and would have to come back and do it so you can be creative with your bylaws you can be creative with ways you can keep things in your community the way you want to but i don't think nearly really most bylaws are most of them 
aren't worth the paper they're written on. They're just sitting in a book somewhere and nobody even realizes they exist. So come back with a policy for us that would deal with the grass issues and that would, uh, you know, and would connect in with the MGA and most of the other issues of unsightly and dangerous premises. Okay, so is there a second to the motion? It's been seconded by the deputy mayor. <clears throat> I just like to add that if we go the policy route, the way you explain the policy is you get a first notice, you get 30 days to deal with it, then you get an order, you get another 30 days. You technically get 60 days till we can come in and do anything. I do think there's a way we should look at that somehow to speed that process up because we get blamed all the time for things not happening or no action being taken. And I know there's one area of town that we've had a number of complaints about unsightly premises more so than naturalization. And our staff has been up, dealt with them, done things, but nothing happens because in the policy way, we can't do anything for basically 60 days. So then we get yelled at because they contact us and staff goes back up and deals with it, but it's a 60 day process. So if I'm living quite frankly across the street from somebody that has tires and coaches out in front of their yard for 60 days and I've complained to the town multiple times and it's not being removed, I'm not going to I'm not a happy camper, right? And that's what's happening in certain areas of town. So that part of it, I wish we could speed up. I mean, you know, I guess in the long run, I'm okay with naturalization. If it takes 60 days to get the point across and get dealt with, I'm fine with that. But when it really is, you know, something that shouldn't be outside, like coaches and tires or whatever, that should be sped up if we could look at a policy down the road. But for this matter, I'm fine with what uh, Councillor Moser has moved in the and the deputy mayor second it. Councillor Halverson. Yeah, and to your point, I mean that all those those items you're talking about that is already addressed in the MGA. Uh, I don't disagree. Should get that sped up would be better. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I do have a concern about, um, and like I said, I I fully agree. We should have rules around these things. I just want to make sure that whatever we come up with. Uh, it's it's reasonable for people to be in compliance with, and it's reasonably a reasonable uh, to, uh, expectations on enforcement. Um, so, uh, to Councillor Mosher's point, we're you know he's talking about a, the grass not being more than whatever number gets decided. Well, is that just grass or what kinds of grass? Because when we're talking about turf grass, as you mentioned, that doesn't grow more than thirty centimeters, but that's not the only things that are in lawns. So if somebody's mowing their grass but letting their hay go you know that's going to be two feet tall um so it's and I'm, I'm not trying to deride what you're saying there. i might just try to point out that this is going to be more we, we need more uh more help to flush this out than than just saying just the grass right uh, that's not just the issue uh, we also have to be careful not to capture you know ornamental grasses or, or something like that you know this and i understand like to to kayla's point we've had three complaints Right. It's, so this isn't this isn't a you know it's not like it's a pressing issue that uh, on the town, but we we do need to be respectful of people's property, respectful of town staff's ability to to manage this, and respectful of of the ability to enforce it and to have people come in compliance of whatever it is we do. Um, so I, my my question before we vote on this, I guess, is uh, this policy? Like, do you is is there space is is there space in the staff report where we could, uh, I mean, a member of the staff, you coming back and saying this is going to be quite unwieldy and it's going to be, but is there space in the staff report that would, we could come up with some plain language that captures the spirit of what Councilor Mosher is asking for. Um, and, but yet, you know, is ambiguous enough to allow for some naturalization and some, uh, some other, other plant life. And, and that can be managed uh, enforcement compliance wise. Yeah, again, this will come back for council's consideration and if there's um, more requests for direction items in that, but I, I think we could come forward with to say, you know, unsightly or unkempt looks like this and keep it more that this is what we do consider unsightly and unkempt and not put restrictions on what is allowed or not try to identify this is okay and this is okay, but this isn't okay. Just very clearly say, this is what unsightly is for us. Our grass height will be this, and this is what unkempt is for us. That seems more reasonable. Again, if that's that ambiguity we're looking for, 
think. Um, Rather than oh, sorry. My, my only concern with that though is is the natural naturalization side of things. Uh, this whole thing, again came about because somebody wanted to naturalize a lawn, um, and I think we do need to be respectful of that. How are we going to accommodate that within that bylaw? We, uh, some of the ideas we talked about was, um, you know, if or were if if somebody wanted to naturalize and this mm -hmm. was deliberate then perhaps we could have uh, some kind of notification made to the town to say, this is the process, I'm, I'm, I'm undertaking a process to naturalize and the town, you know, in 60 days, maybe they do issue the, the warnings just so that they have that in, in their, their back pocket. And if they haven't followed through the naturalization after 60 days to say, okay, well, no, that's, this is an unkept lawn, you gotta go, you gotta, you gotta mow it. Or uh, they can say, okay, I can see what you're going for here and, you know, continue on. I can see you're adhering, and there's no dangers. There's no, uh, there's no hazards. It is can we can we add something like that? In? I mean, would that? I, I don't think that's unreasonable. Well, I I think that originally was a recommendation, sort of by Councillor Moser when this first came out, some type of a a plan or something per se to let people know that they're naturalizing, and then our inspector or bylaw officer can go out and say, no, he's he or she or they are actually following their plan and it's going to take a while, but they're following their plan. But when we suggested that people didn't want to plan either. So, I mean, sooner or later, you know, we have to come to an agreement and some kind of compromise. And with all due respect to the three complaints, this came up my first mayoral, the first meeting I ever sat in this chair, this was on the agenda. And I didn't think it was a big issue either. This room was full. We had it on the agenda again in spring the, or late, yeah, late spring, but this room was full. So it's definitely more than three people that seem to care about what their yards look like or their neighbor's yards look like. So it is a much bigger issue than three complaints, but people are very complacent. And unless something's really concerning them or really seems to be dangerous, a lot of times they don't complain. So I loved the idea before, and I love your suggestion, Councillor Halverson, that maybe if someone truly wants to naturalize and has some type of, and, and they shouldn't have to pay um, just some type of a design or or a plan that they can say, here's what my plan is moving forward. Then if they do, people do come and say, you're not following the plan or it's not naturalization, we can deal with it. Because now there are some that are doing a great job naturalizing and some that I just personally feel are just letting their lawn grow. So that would, you know, determine which is which. I do agree something should be there, but when it was brought up before, it was really, really not received well by the people that want naturalization. So we have to make a choice sooner or later. Uh, to that point, the issue around the plan, I think it, it, it was, it was uh, people were concerned that you can't plan for, for what's going to come up, right? Because it's natural. You have no idea what's gonna pop up there. Um, but if we say, you know, if all that needs to be said is, you know, notify the town, I plan on going through the naturalization process. And then at, you know, at 60 days, if we've had, if we've had a complaint, I mean, if there's no complaint, then there's no problem. But if we've had a complaint, we send someone out to say, okay, uh, you said you were naturalizing. What is it you've done? Right. And they can say, well, hey, look, I've got uh, this, this, this are, are growing up here. I'm planning on dealing with that. And, and yet, yet, and here's the work I've done. Fine, you know, uh, just really just a, a recognition that something's being done. Um, and if you come back again 30 days later and it's just gone wild and there's a fire hazard and there's junk all over the place, well, you say, well, clearly you're not naturalizing, you can cut it down. But I think if we can do that, if we can put some stipulation in there that we're not looking for, you know, rows and in, 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 in your field of, of what you're going to be growing type plan, just the fact that like a notification that, yes, I'm going to be naturalizing. And then we just come back and check and just see how it, that you're that you're naturalizing and not just letting your lawn grow after a few days if we can capture that somehow i think that would satisfy what councillor Mosier is after and i don't think it's unreasonable to ask people who are interested in naturalization to just say yeah well this is what we're doing i i don't disagree i didn't disagree before but yes you know you have to if you want to maybe go outside the box a bit of what most people think is acceptable, then you have to basically maybe explain what you're doing and then everything's great. Life is good. I'm okay with that. Right. If you're not willing to explain what your thoughts or plans are with your yard and you're just letting it grow, well then most people aren't cool with that. Right. So, and I don't, and, I, and I'm not sure the numbers, but all you have to do is drive around town. It costs 40 to 50 bucks 
on average to have a lawn mowed. And if there's a thousand properties in town, 980 of them get mowed on a regular basis. So if, if everybody wanted naturalization, they wouldn't be paying 50 bucks a week to mow their yard or doing it themselves, quite honestly, right? So I agree some type of a plan so they can answer the complaints, go say it's been dealt with, because that's the biggest problem. Things are being sort of pushed aside or not being dealt with right now. Yeah. Right. So we have to get something in place that staff can go out and actually have some authority to deal with something. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. If, we, if I'm asking if maybe we can amend this motion to include in that um, in that recommendation for that policy that there be a, a process in place where anyone willing to naturalize just notifies the town. And then if there's a complaint, then town staff can go out and, and check it out and see that that's what they're doing. Is Councilor Moser okay to add that to those motion amend that? Well, I don't see any need to edit it because it's just information that's going to come back to us later to decide on with your policy. Is that not correct? So it's not, we're not specifically telling you to put a $250 fine or a $1,000 fine. We're saying we want a fine. We're saying we want it dealt with a little more shortly. We, Council Haldem is saying it's you'd like a, you know, a plan, you know, well, if that's all the things that are we're discussing, that's the things that should come back in our policy. So I think we're just, you know, basically the motions includes everything that we're, we're speaking to tonight. It's basically, that's what this is about. That's what committee of the whole is about. So we can all yeah. sort of get on the same page somewhat yeah. and then staff, when they bring it back in a month or two months or whenever it's time, we're not looking at each other going, where did all this stuff come from? Really? Yeah. Right. That's what I'm you saying. Know. I don't, I just didn't, I just want to make sure that wasn't, that wasn't missed. Like, and again, I, I really don't want to call it a plan, but I would like a, a notification of, of, uh, uh, of naturalization or something. That's all we need. Just if we can include that as part of the assessment to see how other municipalities are doing it. And if that fits into what we're trying to do under this policy. And also, uh, we're new to the Committee of the Whole format here, but in the spirit of Committee of the Whole, um, it would be appropriate, I believe, once we have a more flushed out policy, what this looks like, to bring it back to Committee of the Whole. So if there's anything that uh, Council is unclear of or that they want to talk about more, um, based on this direction, staff, we can go forward and we can start to draft something. Um, but I don't think Council has to feel that they need to put it for notice and then decision right away. That draft policy could once again come to a committee of the whole where we can have these kind of conversations based on a more um, well laid out draft policy. No, I agree, because I think at, at, in a future committee of the whole meeting or whenever this comes forward, you know, we're a little we're a little short at the table right now, too. So it'd be nice to hear other counselors inputs on it so that everybody has a chance to have their say. I mean, you know, things come up in the summer and this, this these meetings weren't scheduled until a couple of weeks ago. So certain counselors had priorities they had they just couldn't get out of. So, again, everybody's allowed to miss the odd meeting here and there. So I think it would make sense to come back with a with a draft policy at another committee of the whole meeting. Then we can discuss it out like we are here today and maybe send it back again. I mean, again, this isn't going to be a bylaw or a policy that we do overnight, because as I said before, the two times that we had it on the actual public part of the agenda, you know, we should have sold tickets to get in because the room was pretty packed. So uh, it is a pretty heated discussion within the community or, or an important discussion in the community on both sides of it. So I do agree coming back to this. This format first would be the way to go. So there is a motion on the floor. It's been seconded. Any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carry unanimously. So there's nothing on nine. There's no in camera. So motion for adjournment. So moved by the deputy mayor. Thank, thank you very much, everybody, for coming. Uh, our last, well, now we have one more meeting in the summer, technically. So uh, thank you very much.